Firstly, I want to greet all that have come here, even in the Miracle Center uh, Cathedral building, just to be with his beloved, wonderful man of God, to tell him that you are not alone in this conviction and your beloved family. Man of God, we want to officially thank you for thinking beyond the Miracle Center house and extending your love to all the people and some who might never meet you in person. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I, I come with greetings from Fanero Ministries International. And, and when we heard about Karamoja cry, we, we, we also have a manifest television. Immediately we took the link. It's live, live right now. To make sure that no person has an excuse. This evening we have a service. I'm going to make sure that we emphasize this responsibility in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, but also, uh, most importantly, uh, like uh, Pastor Robert has said, that there are things that that are not only our responsibility. As a church, as a church, but also define so much of our identity of who we are before God. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes Bible, that the earth was made for the profit of all. And the king will always have an advantage in the field. Even he himself is served. But the Bible, the literal translation of the Hebrew tells us how the king is advantaged even in the field. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Those of us who read uh, church history or biblical history, we see what people used to do when it came to the, to, the, to the prophet of the field. If you remember the time when God gave a word to Pharaoh about what was going to happen in the famine in Egypt. The Bible tells us that Pharaoh needed to look for a man in whom was the spirit of God to make sure that Egypt was provided for. But as can see, kings were responsible for the food of every kingdom. They know how much should come in and how much should go out. It's their indelible responsibility. So we, when the Bible tells us in Revelation that we are supposed to be, we are kings and priests to the most high God. That's both a statement of faith and experience. That you cannot believe in the kingly anointing on your life and not care how men eat. Let me say it again. You cannot care, you cannot carry a kingly anointing on your life and not care how your people eat. This is regardless of how much you have. This is embedded in the revelation of who you are. You might have 1,000 shillings. You might have 5,000 shillings. You get a portion of that. Because you believe on the grace of God operating on your life. And make sure you do it. At the beginning of the year, in part of the prophecies that the Lord gave us, the Lord spoke to us about the scarcity of food. And even as a ministry, we have tried to do that for the north. And, 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 but we, we cannot tell you just how much need is in northern Uganda. While we have homes today that are wasting food. In fact, uh, Pastor Robert, this day, the Lord spoke to us. We are, for the, for the start, this is just for the start. 
for, for the start we are buying food worth 100 million as Fanero. But it's just the beginning to respond to what God is telling you. And we are going to get more in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. This, this is not because as ministries we don't have needs. We do have needs. But there are certain things by priority that are above others. Right now a brick and a bag of cement is not more important than a child having food on their table today. That is why we should not make this a miracle center thing. Pastors that are watching across the country, this is not a miracle center thing. This is not a funeral thing. This is not a worship harvest thing. It is not a this ministry, that ministry thing. No. It is the responsibility of the kingdom. By revelation, the church was never even meant to fundraise. No, the scriptures are clear. The church was, was meant to respond. It is not something we should even be doing broadcasts for. No, 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 no. That is the Thessalonica church. Paul says, as a mother, I nursed you. So I would not lose you. But the Bible speaks of the church in Macedonia. The Bible says that they, they did beyond what we expected. That their poverty abounded to their liberality. And in that liberality, the Bible says they gave all that they had. And on top of that, the Bible says, not only did they give, but they gave themselves even unto us, the Lord's servants, by the will of God. They were not just givers in their substance, but they were available to serve. You might not have the money, but you say, I can do this. I can do that. Whatever the Lord has impressed on your heart, and it's maturity both to give and apply yourself in whatever you can. There are people right now watching us in Karamojo and you're watching this broadcast as these cars come as food comes as equipment comes whatever you can in the office God has given you take that responsibility it's maturity Paul tells uh, Jesus tells Peter when you were young you expressed yourself in the liberties and you went wherever you willed. But when you grow up, a man will guard you and take you places you will not to go. He was speaking about the spirit of inconvenience that sometimes has to come because of the responsibility that we have toward God. I was not supposed to be here. I should be in, in my closet praying because today is a Thursday. But somebody guddled me today because there is a responsibility to our nation that is beyond my time in the closet now. And God sees that. So I have a few more minutes to share here because it's more important for me that we understand the heart and the spirit of what is being done here than the demystification of mysteries. No, than the demystifications of mysteries. It is important to understand the spirit working and what is done and the demonstration of ministry that is a responsibility of a church it is the responsibility of believers that are watching across the world and some of you who are on live stream you're not even in the country wherever there is we thank God that there are platforms that have been given for us to take that responsibility and do what's done what must be done when it should be done. Lastly, when you talk about inheritance, 
There are things that touch inheritance. And even when God is defining the distinctive marks of inheritance, He uses the examples of wine, oil, and bread. That in the typifications of everything He expresses for our elevation, we always find the language that touches food. Because food is spiritual. When Cain took a seed to God and Abel, the Bible tells us that the Lord regarded Abel's seed. He sacrificed from the field, but he did not regard Cain's sacrifice. He looked unto Abel's sacrifice with respect, and with Cain he had none. And when he murders his brother, and God asks him where his brother is. The Bible tells us, God said, Cast are you from the ground, which has opened its mouth, to swallow the blood of your brother. And he tells him, and from now on, you shall be a vagabond, on the you shall be a restless man. And Cain knew, that now that the earth has rejected him, he shall be killed. It had to take the mark of God to put on the hand of this man and say nobody shall kill him. But what do I mean as I finish? He told Cain, God told Cain, that the earth will not yield forth its substance. The world can reject you, the earth can reject you. The earth can reject you. And in part as a nation, like Pastor said, that perhaps the there are things that we need to repent before God. Because the land should not reject us to a point where it cannot feed its people. It does not take nuclear physics or quantum for us to interpret what God is telling us. That is why the Bible tells us, like the pastor has said, as we are taking our responsibility in the giving, because there is a reason why somebody out there is lacking and you have bread on your table. There's a reason why somebody out there is sleeping hungry. And you have bread on, bread on your table. They are cold in their beds. And you are warm in your bed. It's our responsibility right now to do what is responsible by God and give to those people. But also speak to God and inquire distinctively for our land as a people and find direction. And that is why we are doing two things today. We are giving and we are praying. Pastor Robert and Mama, we are here to simply tell you that you're not alone in this cause. That we believe in what you are doing and we thank God that God has raised men and women like these who still care beyond themselves. So allow me to thank already for what God is going to do. Allow me to thank God for the giving that is going to come. Soon. Allow me to speak a distinctive blessing on that man and woman right now who is giving even in their lack. May our God establish you in places of power influence and affluence. May he multiply the grace operating on your life that you might have all sufficiency for all that you need and that you'll always have more. I repeat, you will always have more for every good work. Somebody tonight is sowing a seed for Karamoja and, and God is not just going to give you but he's going to define you. He's going to define you. Because there's anointing available to define us tonight as we respond to this noble cause. To God be the glory.